The gentleman yields back the balance of his time. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Roskam, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in December of last year, the American Studies Association did a shameful thing. They decided to call on an academic boycott of one nation, and that is the state of Israel. Now think about that. They looked over every other country in the world and they said basically, by admission, oh, you're fine and you're fine and you're fine and you're fine. Doesn't matter what's happening there or what's happening there, but we're gonna go after one country, Israel, and we're gonna call upon a boycott. The former Israeli ambassador, Michael Oren, after that happened, he asked this question and he said, will Congress stand up for academic freedom? And the answer is yes. I was pleased, Mr. Speaker, to join with 134 colleagues, myself included, to send a letter to the American Studies Association to admonish them on what is clearly an anti-Semitic effort on their part. I know that's a very harsh thing for me to say, but there's no other way to describe it. It is anti-Semitic. I intend to move forward in the coming weeks to author legislation entitled the Protect Academic Freedom Act, which will prevent these campaigns by prohibiting federal funds to universities that boycott Israeli academic institutions. Said another way, these organizations are clearly free to do what they want to do under the First Amendment, but the American taxpayer doesn't have to subsidize it. The American taxpayer doesn't have to be complicit in it. And the American taxpayer doesn't have to play any part in it. In fact, what we're doing on a bipartisan basis is calling for Congress to defend academic freedom because we recognize that academic freedom is at its very root of our own freedom. I yield back.